Let's now consider a pretty basic system. Here it is in normal form. x prime is equal to 6, negative 3, 2, 1 times x. And let's suppose we have this solution, x equal to e to the 3t, e to the 3t, plus 3e to the 4t, 2e to the 4t. We stated in the last video that solutions only work if the vectors are linearly independent. So let's check that. We're going to take the determinant of the first vector, e to the 3t, e to the 3t. And the second column will be the second vector, 3e to the 4t, 2e to the 4t. Multiplying this way, I have 2 e to the 7t minus, multiplying this way, gives me 3 e to the 7t, which is negative e to the 7t. There are values of t that make this non-zero, so these are linearly independent. So we do have our first condition done. And with this, I want to define the idea of the fundamental matrix. The first thing I need for a fundamental matrix, I need x1 and x2 to be linearly independent. And the second condition is I need the Ronskian to be not equal to 0 for all values of t. In order to be linearly independent, I just need some value of t where it's not 0. And for the fundamental matrix, I need it to be true for all of the values. Looking back at my previous example, looking back at my previous example, my Ronskian was e to the neg negative e to the 7t, and no matter what value you pick for t, that will never be zero. So these vectors do satisfy my two conditions. And in this case, the fundamental matrix is the matrix of the Ronskian. So the Ronskian was a determinant, and this would be actually written in matrix form. For this example, e to the 3t, e to the 3t, and then 3e to the 4t, 2e to the 4t, since we verified that it satisfies both of these conditions. As a reminder, here was the original problem in normal form. Writing this out, the first row gives me 6x minus 3y. The second row will give me 2x plus y. And we've already shown that we have our fundamental matrix and what it was given by. So that tells me my actual general solutions are of the form c1 times the first vector, e to the 3t, e to the 3t, plus c2 times the second vector. 3e to the 4t, 2e to the 4t. So when I write these out individually, I'm claiming x is equal to c1e to the 3t plus 3c2e to the 4t, and y is c1e to the 3t plus 2c2 e to the 4t. Now let's look at actually verifying this solution. So let's start with the x's. I'm claiming x prime is equal to 6x minus 3y. Let's start with the left hand side, the x prime. So I'm going to come over here and take the derivative of this. The derivative of c1e to the 3t would be 3c1e to the 3t. The derivative of 3c2e to the 4t would be 12c2e to the 4t. And I now want to verify that this is equal to the right hand side. In order to do this piece, let's scroll down just a little bit. I need 6x minus 3y. x we have given up here as c1 e to the 3t plus 3c2 e to the 4t. 
I then have minus 3 times y, c1e to the 3t, plus 2c2e to the 4t. Now we can work on simplifying. This is 6c1e to the 3t, plus 18c2e to the 4t. Multiplying the second one out gives me negative 3c1e to the 3t, minus 6c2 e to the 4t. Combining like terms, 6 minus 3 is 3 c1 e to the 3t. And 18 minus 6 is 12. So 12 c2 e to the 4t. And we can see that this matches. These two match, which tells me that this was correct. This is the actual solution for x. And we also need to verify that it works for y as well. We need to make sure that the second equation holds as well, which I won't do it here, but I do encourage you to try that one out on your own.